And you know I'm really trying to make them readable. I, um, I write different papers and, and if I go really, really hard and make it understandable, the referees come back with 50 pages of, of comment. If I just go for it and just make it maths and illegible, referees come back with no comments. <laughs> You know, I'm not so sure what I could do about that. Um, who's the finest mind in the audience? We'll put them onto that task. Maybe you can move your seat or... Um, besides, what I'm going to do now, I think, is probably second-hand to 19% of you, by the look of it. And um, maybe a mystery to the remaining 81. I don't actually know who Flight of the Concords are. They're a rock group, is that right? Or a what? A comedy group? Or? A, a little bit of both, yeah. I'd better see how insulting that is. No, it's... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, what I think I've been tasked to do is, is do the absolute basics of an absolutely basic LR for something really straightforward. So, I mean, really straightforward is single source, but maybe that's just too trivial. So let's do a really straightforward mixture. So I'll just have two nice little minor peaks and two... Great big, huge, major peaks. And I don't think they come a lot nicer than that. And the first step in an LR, after you've finished looking at your profile and deciding what's what, is to work out the two hypotheses. So I often sort of set the audience up for a failure here. I, um, I often do something like this. I go, okay, off you go, all right, and I almost always get away with it without someone saying, well, what are the circumstances, I don't know what my hypotheses are. So it's very different if it's alleged to be a high vaginal swab, is that the words you use here, except you, you pronounce them differently, is that right? Um, I mean, if this is a... a, a a profile associated with the female, then the hypotheses would be person of interest and victim, victim and unknown, right? If it's associated with the victim, it is uncontentious to have the victim as the known sample. But alternatively, and we did one yesterday, it was a stain on the front of male pants, and, the, and it, it reverses. The, the matter of interest is actually, is the victim's um, material there? So you, you cannot proceed without understanding the hypothesis, the hypotheses, and, and that's a point of criticism of uh, Bayesian approaches, that we, we need to know this to formulate the hypotheses. Another criticism we've faced is that the number changes if you change the hypotheses. I find that a really fascinating criticism because I'd be very, very worried about a number that didn't change if you changed the hypotheses. Now, you might have to go sit on top of a mountain for a while to work out why that is. But if, if your statistic is invariant to your hypotheses, it cannot tell between the hypotheses. Uh, anyhow, can we agree that's like a... You know, that's probably our common sex assault case. All right, what is the... So the Likert ratio tells us to look at the probability of the evidence given HP over the probability of the evidence given HD. What is the chance I'm going to see that if that is a mixture of the person of interest and the victim? I've got time. Thank you. I heard a one. It was a quietly spoken one, but it was audible up the front here. Oh, what a great idea. And, and you're going to do that writing? 
we have an agreement now where I'm going to write on the board and someone's going to transcribe me onto the screen. And, that's, and that would probably, I don't know who came up with that. It would probably have been best if I'd written on the screen in the first place, wouldn't it? But I'm going to be done in the next two seconds anyhow. Okay, now, what is the probability of this evidence if the person of interest is not involved? And what I quite like to do when I'm uh, teaching this is I get people to sort of dramatically get them out of their mind. I actually get people, when they're using paper, to put something over it. <laughs> Just sort of get rid of it out of your head. All right, victims A, B, what's the unknown perpetrator? It's pretty easy, it's a CD, all right? Chance of a person being a CD? We're product ruling today, just, just for old time's sake. All right. That's the stock standard LR. I claim that in a chapter of a book I was associated with. I've written out the formula for all the easy ones. Deborah would leap up and say, well, John, I wish you hadn't said that. I'd like them to derive them all themselves, which would prove they understood them. And, you know, she's right, isn't she? But anyhow, I've tried to write them out. But you know I'm hideously error prone, so you know you'll have to derive them yourself to check it wasn't me. You know? Is that what you wanted, Debbie? I mean, that's about the simplest one ever. Oh, sure, I can do anything I claim, within reason. Um, so three alleles actually only become fun when the minor is the person of interest. I'll, uh, I'll, just, I'll, just, I'll just have no stutter the first time, and then I'm going to have stutter. All right? And do you want this above? Where do you want this one? Yeah, above the Okay. I'll do it above, I'm going to slip below, and I'll put in a stutter. And then I want, I'm going to quit this job, all right? We'll just have the same old story, so I won't change that. Uh, we'll make him an AC. AC. Okay. What is the chance of getting that profile if these are the two people involved? It's a one. Okay. Somewhat dramatically, get rid of them. Victim A, B. Let me just start again. P, O, I is A, C. Victim is C, D. It's only fun if the if the person of interest is the minor for threes. Person of interest AC, what is the chance of getting that profile if they're the true donors? One. Melodramatically get rid of them. What is the true perpetrator? Okay, well, it could be an AA. Do we agree? It could be an AC or an AD. And we don't think it can be anything else because this is above the stochastic threshold and shouldn't be dropping. There's a couple of nods. Steve LeBond's nodding. Okay. So, an or in words is a plus in maths. We had three options, right? AA, or, AC, or, AD. So I'm just going to put the plus signs in. AA, or, AC or AD. All right? This is, I'm so bad, I should do that up there. And if I could just get uh, Mike to put some twos in that bottom line. What's that? Oh, a D at the end, AD. 
Okay. Now, uh, to reinforce a point that both um, Todd and Mike made yesterday, let's have a, have a thing there. Now, if you're in, in my uh, organization, a very, very bad thing will happen. The software will put uh, a signal here called S. And that is just the biggest mental clue that they, it thinks that's stutter. And I really wish it didn't do that. In Melbourne, they actually put PRS, peak in the region of stutter, which I think is quite a lot better. I don't know, what, what do you guys do? Whatever it is, we've got to stop you going. That stutter, I've forgotten about it. All right? Because let's go through the game now. Uh, let's have our person of interest back again. Uh, I can't remember what I had him, AC. All right? Chance of that profile if he's the donor, that's one. Right? Chance of that profile if he's not the donor and we melodramatically get rid of him. My feeling is that that stutter in the B position uh, could actually be his mate. So we're going to have to allow AA or AB or AC or AD. So or in words is a plus in maths. So we get one more added in and just to you know, sort of put it a little bit out of order here. And that, that is what um, both Mike and Todd were talking about, and it's in the swig dam rules. If that stutter peak could pair with your miners, you have to think about it possibly being the allelic mate of your miner. Uh, let's make it a little bit, just alter it a little now. Uh, even I'm getting bored with myself, so I'll get off the stage soon. getting well out of order now, but you'll forgive me, I hope. Chance of that profile, if those two are the donors, is one. If it's the victim and someone else, It's got to be the AB, right? We've got two minor peaks sitting here. That, that accounts for all the alleles we need. So we go back to discounting the stutter. 2F of A, F of B. And now just one last one. Sort of starting to get realistic now. Chance of that profile if these two other donors is one. If he's not the donor, and just melodramatically get rid of him, because we're below our threshold, we accept he could have a sister allele that we cannot visualize. So what is that? Well, if you're in Europe, you call that AF. So what does AF mean? Yeah. You, what's that? I would prefer you not necessarily to default to that position, although I believe that is the default position for... Yeah, that's what we would do. Sure. I, I would like to have something. Sure. Um, well, the alternative is that you just use this, but now you, we'll just talk just for a very brief moment on what that numerically is. I mean, I was taught you how to do it in a very quick hand yesterday.
So I'm going to do John Buckleton's quick hand, and then I'm going to do it properly, which is the same as admitting John Buckleton's quick hand is not properly. Okay? A, F. How many orders of the letters A and F? Two. Lose the F. All right, that's called the 2P rule. Let's do it properly. A and F, so F means anything. All right, so what is anything? So this could be an AA, or, and an OR is a plus, an A and anything else, and in, in Europe that's called a Q. Uh, I've also seen this, A star, but you've got to remember the star, which sort of stands for a wild card, means not A, right? So Q is anything else other than A. Okay, we're product ruling today, just for old time's sake. Just watch me here, I'm just going to do a little bit of sleight of hand on you. Is that cool? The frequency of anything other than A is 1 minus the frequency of A? Right, and I know how much you love algebra. Okay. Yes, please, Stephen. So the product rule is not financially guaranteed to be conservative. Yes, it is. That top one is guaranteed to be conservative in this regard. Now, remember, I've, I've got a concern around non-concordances. And remember, I've put up absolutely nothing today that was non-concordant. But in the event of a concordance, it is guaranteed to be conservative. Thank you. So what Stephen has pointed out to us is that 2FA minus anything is smaller than 2FA, right? So this is always smaller than that, which is why I get away with my approximation. But it also, remember I said yesterday I'm wasting a bit of, it, of information? That's the bit I'm wasting. Well, Q is, uh, is the sum of all the other allele frequencies other than A, so... Um, if A was a very rare allele, then Q can very nearly be one, couldn't it? I mean, it's got a lot to do with what A is. Is that all right? Okay, now, over uh, drinks last night, I was asked how I felt about source attribution, and I, um, I went, uh, I went um, surprisingly silent for me. Um, but I've been asked just to give one little thought to you, even if it just, just makes you think for a minute, might make you think all Antipodeans speak slowly. That's not true, you actually just speak really quickly here. Do you guys know the sibling formulas off the top of your head? So how, how could you possibly not know that? All right. If a sibling is an AB, what's the chance? If a person is an AB, what's the chance a sibling is AB? It's actually um, 1 plus F of A plus F of B plus 2 F A F B over 4. Don't, please don't write this down. This is written down in 100,000 places. In fact, if you don't get the exercises to write, to write today, I'm going to make you derive it. Um, and that is, for, for sort of realistic values, is often around about a third. And an AA, the chance is brother's AA is 1 plus F of A squared over 4. And just by good luck, that's around about a third. So the chance two siblings match at a locus is about a third. 
So at least a quarter just by genetics, and then a little bit extra by chance, right? So it gets up to about a third. So if you guys are working at 13 loci, I'll give you a race, all right? Can you do one third to the 13th power? I'm, I'm going to do it in my head here, um, but you guys do it by whatever mechanism, and whoever gets there first, the winner. All right? So that's one in about 1.5 million, I think. I'm very error prone, but can you check me? Someone doing that? Is that someone doing that? Or are you just going to trust my mental arithmetic? It's a roundabout, right? Okay, so the chance that two siblings match is about one in one and a half million at the 13 CODIS loci. Are there one and a half million pairs of siblings in the States? Yeah, who in this room has a sibling? Okay, that was very close to 100%. Are there one and a half million people in the States? No, there's a lot more. All right, there's probably, I don't know, 100 million siblings in the States? There are a pair of people in the States who match at 13 loci. And they're probably siblings. They might be parent-child, I don't know. I statistically swear <coughs> that there are multiple pairs of people in the States who match at the 13 CODIS loci. All right, you're on, Mike. All right.